Good morning, everyone, online, brothers and sisters. Happy New Year. Today is the second day of uh, the Chinese New Year. We look at second Ecclesiastes. The first one we look at vanity is vanity. The author, although he said vanity, actually in the first chapter he emphasized that he is a preacher. And also he mentioned this three times, I'm preacher, preacher, preacher. In a life of vanity, is it that it's meaningless? When the preacher talked about vanity, it's for us to think about in a life of vanity, there is God's way. If you find God's way, you will find meaning. The preacher found the way of God. Although he's king, he is very wise, but in his many um, identities, he is the proudest, he's the most worthy, is his preacher. In his eyes, king is nothing, wise man is nothing. The most important is you find the way of God and you can spread it to the world. This is the meaning. So there is Ecclesiastes. It's not vanity. It's from vanity. We need to see if our life does not coincide with God's way. It is vanity. And from this, let's go into chapter 2. Chapter 2 is we'll deeply look at life. If we spread uh, 1 to 15, uh, 1 to 11 is 1, 12 to the end is the second. And these two big sections, we'll think about what's uh, wisdom and what's um, meaning. I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure but surely this also was vanity. I said of laughter, madness, and of mirth, what does it accomplish? I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine, how guiding my heart with wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly till I may, might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all days in their lives. So the preacher, he is the king of uh, Israel, he's Solomon, son of David, very uh, wise person. And he needs to talk to my heart, come on, I will test you. What can fill our hearts? How can fill our hearts? What can fill our hearts? If life is vanity, the source of vanity is our heart. And no matter what we do, we can't really be satisfied. So that is that is vanity. So let's test it to see how to how we can fill our hearts. Let's. Um, use uh, pleasure, use pleasure to try to fill the heart. Let's um, try to enjoy life. But when he tried this, it's all vanity, it's still vanity. Although they use madness, um, it's still empty. And they will mention in more detail later. And when it talks about happiness what's the purpose of happiness happiness is it useful um, pleasure is it useful can we let our hearts be happy happiness we all look forward to who can be happy what's after happiness it could be more vanity after happiness we can't use happiness to fill our hearts so let's let's continue. I use um, I gratify my flesh with wine because there's a lot of difficulty in lives and problems and drinking wine can let us put away some of the these difficulties. Can we? While well, my heart 
uh, is still guide, guided with wisdom. It's just um, a fine touch of the wine, not drinking heavily, and still sober, and still use wisdom to guide. If we are totally drunk, there is no wisdom. And when you are totally drunk, you lose uh, the meaning. So he said, so with self-restraint, I drink a little bit so that I can relax. Is it good enough? And they discovered, he discovered it's all vanity. In this world, what do we need to do is will satisfy our hearts. This is something that what people wanted to find throughout the times. The author wants us to know, no matter what you do, our heart is hard to be filled, whatever we do. The reason is very simple, because when God created us and we sin, we have, there's a crack between God and us, and sin has separated us. No matter what we do, we can't be totally happy no matter what we do, because something is missing. So it's like a little child leaving parents. Initially, they will be happy, but after playing for a long time, they will be they will miss their parents, and no matter what, when when no matter what they do, they they still um, think about their parents. Initially, they are very happy when they're tired. They miss the parents. They miss the parents a lot. Same with people. When we leave the Heavenly Father, when we are under the sun, no matter what we search for, it cannot fill our hearts. This is the reality. In Ecclesiastes, the author wants us to see this. So he said, no matter what you use wine, use pleasure, we can't can satisfy our hearts. In verse 4, I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards, and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing of trees and grow by acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my houses. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of provinces and uh, prince province. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of sons and men, and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desire, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from my pleasure, and my heart rejoiced in the labor. And this was my reward from all my reward. I looked for all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and gas being of the wind, there was no profit under the sun. So, the preacher said, earlier said, uh, pleasure uh, is meaningless. He is not saying this uh, without experiment. And in verse 4, he, he, he built vineyards and buildings and orchards and everything. So he has built a lot of things, uh, built beautiful things. And it's very interesting. For people, they like building things. So when you think about it, when we are living in a house, you want to plant plants. And when you're happy, you want you have a, you want to have a balcony. Once you have a balcony, you want a garden. You like people like to plant. They want to be beautiful, so that everybody so you can enjoy this greatly. This is something natural. We have a tendency. We like, like something beautiful. We like something we like to build. When God 
created us. He is a God of creation. There is in us uh, this aspect of God we like to create. So the preacher build a lot of things. So see these great things can it fill our hearts, so that our heart is satisfied, so that our heart will not be stuck with vanity. He's Solomon, so whatever he creates is different from us. So when he starts building, we're talking about um, Babylon, uh, Solomon Temple. Um, so all the things he created is great, is golden. At that time, when they've seen what Solomon has created, they are they are amazed, and things that he created is the greatest buildings works. The temple that he has built, in looking at the bronze uh, pillars in the door, it's a it's a miracle. Nobody knows how he is able to make it because the the qual the uh, amount of copper is, is so much. How did how can he make this copper pillar? Even now, scientists. Is amazed at how he can create this. Even now, it's very hard to build it. So Solomon built a lot of things. He planned a lot of things. Whatever he's built is、um, beautiful. And he bought servants in his home. There are servants. He has a lot of servants. He has a lot of treasures. Has, there is a treasure of Solomon.、Uh, it's shocking what he has. Everybody、uh, gives him tributes. So his riches, everybody loves in this world. He has、uh, singers. Uh, concubines and herds, so much, and everybody is amazed. And so he is prosperous. He is very prosperous. Also, my wisdom remained with me. The wisdom means that he's the wisdom that he's looking for meaning in life. Although he. Use all these riches to fill things around him. You know that what he's looking for is not what he's what he's really looking for. He wants to test himself to see if he get all these things. Is he really satisfied? He looked for truth. He looked for the meaning of life. He's still there. He's just using these material. Um, riches to to see if this is what he needed.、Uh, these things will not be able to endure whatever he wanted. His eyes desired. He did not keep from them. Whatever he wanted to see, he wanted to. To keep his lust of eyes, he wanted to satisfy the lust of his eyes, and there is nothing. He's not withholding his heart from any pleasure, and because of this,、um, uh, is it really life? Is it really about pleasure? And from my heart, reduce all my labor. From all my labor, he. He labored to create all these things so that he can enjoy and pleasure and find pleasure. And in、uh, verse eleven, then I looked on all the works that my hands had done and on labor which I toiled, and indeed it was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. So all the things that I have labored, whatever he labored, is amazing. Spectacular, especially his initial times,、uh, the the empire that he's created is unimaginable. Even so, what he's、uh, done, he is、uh, successful. You can't say he's not successful. What should we say when we talk about Solomon? Talking about 
handsome, he's the most handsome people, head person in the world. He's the wisest person in the world, handsome and wise. It's already a, an imaginable. He's also the richest person and also a king. So. When ladies they are looking for、um, a partner, you know, a handsome guy, a wise guy, and a rich guy, and all that he has laboured, he's exceeded everybody in the world. And, and back then, when the Queen of Sheba came over to see Solomon, he's already. Um, attracted by Solomon and looking at his wisdom, and and Siba、uh, has a lot of、um, treasures and gold. She's not a normal person. She is very rich, very influential. But when he saw when she saw Solomon, she cannot hold herself together. When He, the, someone like that, as Solomon,、um, when he laboured, it's almost like he owned the world, and he said it's all vanity, all is grasping the wind. There's no profit under the sun. Everything that he's created, all that he's gotten,、uh, all the pleasures and all these things that he has had. It's all vanity. It's all grasping for the winds, because he's still not satisfied. Even if you use the whole world to put into our heart, it's not good enough. Because the greatest desire is not being satisfied under the sun in our lives. The most important thing is our hearts is never filled. Even if we put the whole world into it, we're still not satisfied. So let's look at the next verse. Then I turn myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do who succeeds the king? Only that he has already done. Then I saw that wisdom excels folly as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in the head, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I am myself perceive that same. Even happens to them all. So I said to my heart, as it happens to the fool, that it happened to me. And why was I then more wise than I said in my heart? That's also is vanity. For there is no more remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever, since all that now is will be forgotten in the days to come. And how does the wise man die? As the fool. So pleasure is not good enough. All the treasure.、Uh, All pleasures cannot fill the heart. Let's focus on wisdom. Can wisdom solve the problem of our lives? And wisdom let us find the meaning of life. So folly, madness, and wisdom—what would that be like? But he discovered. What's the meaning? After myself, what can they do as king? You can only, you can only continue what earlier kings have done. Those who are who come after can only continue with what they have done. Like a very wise king, what can the、uh, succeed successor do? Just do the same thing. The nature is similar. It's like us, like our lives, our parents,、um, taking care of the family, so that we we so we can、um, grow up. And we're doing the same thing with our children. So in the ancient times,、uh, in ancient times,、uh, the The things that the dad gives to us is different from what we give to our sons now.、Um, it's the same thing every generation. There's no difference. So wisdom and lack of wisdom, where's the difference? We're just walking the path of our predecessors. We're just doing what predecessors, our predecessors do. The predecessors,、um, wisdom is、um, better than folly. It's better to be wise than not to be, because wise people they will at least build things up. 
But verse 14, the wise man's eyes are in his head. And you can say that it's in his head. The wise man's eyes are in his head. So a, a wise person is uh, in his head. What does that mean? It means that the wise man and fall, uh, fools are different. Their perspective is different. We use our, our um, head to think about, to look at the world. We're not using our eyes to look at the world. Wise people look at the the, the we look at the meaning behind it. So it's better than the fools because we, the, when, when they use their hearts, when they use their head to look at it, they can see God. The fool walks in the darkness, but wise men, they look for light because they originally they're all from darkness. But wise men would use their, uh, yeah, their uh, spiritual eyes to look for light. The fools, they just cannot find what's same in our lives, right? Uh, some people are, don't know what they're doing. And they just, uh, they're like walking around in darkness. They're just running around in darkness. But wise people, they, although they can't see in their eyes, it's all darkness. They can use their, their hearts to find light. This is what's different. But is that enough? And the preacher said, the wise, the wise man is better than the fool, but there is yet I myself perceive that the same event happens to them all. So I said in my heart, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said to my heart, this also is vanity. Or the wise man is better than fools in this aspect. But no matter where you are wise or fools, you encounter this together. What's the point of being wise? What's the the point of being clever, death, no matter how good you are and wise you are, you need to face death. This is, they need to still face death. So wise and fools, wise men and fools need to meet the same end. And wise people are, struggle even more. Maybe it's better to not know what you're doing and saw vanity and wise men and, um, and fools will be forgotten. So wise men and fools when they die, it's the same thing. No matter how wise you are, no matter how clever you are, you can't escape death. So this is all uh, vanity. So verse 17, Therefore I hate life because work that was done under the sun was distressing to me and saw vanity grasping for the wind. And I hate all my labor in which I have toiled under the sun because I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who, whether it will be wise or fool, you will rue all my labors which I have shown myself wise under the sun. This is vanity. Therefore, I turn my heart and despair under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, who has not labored for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the sun? For all his days are sorrowful and his work burdensome even in the night. His hearts take no rest. This is also vanity. I hate life because under the sun, everything under the sun is trouble and grasping for the wind. Why does he hate life? Because life is too short. There's no eternity in life. The preacher said, if our life is so limited, if our days are so limited, what can we do? Whatever we do is meaningless. 
uh, whatever how wise we are, it's the same thing. Whatever we build, it will all be nothing. Like the Babylon、uh, palace, it's not here. We don't even know what it looks like. We can only imagine what it looks like from historical records. Nobody know what it's like. It's not here anymore. And even Solomon's temple, everybody is amazed. But what what does the temple look like? We only imagining. We're using drawings. We're using the records in the Bible, because the temple is no longer here. So when man created all this, it's all. It's all vanity and all grasping for wind. I hate laboring under the sun. I don't like laboring under the sun. When you after labor, you can accumulate something, which is good. But after laboring, who are you giving that to? It's not you who、uh, says it all. You. You created the company. You created a career. But who are you leaving this to? You may want to leave it to the sun, but the sun may not be able to sustain it. Who can control it? And also, under the sun, we use wisdom. Ah,、uh, verse twenty-four. Nothing is better for a man than I should eat and drink, and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hands of God. Verse nineteen. Those who、uh, come after me is he a fool or a wise person? Who knows? No matter how wise we are, we cannot control. We cannot calculate our children whether they are wise or fools. We don't know. Even if our children are wise,、uh, they could have made a wrong decision, and、uh, everything is gone. Who, who actually knows, right? It's like myself when I'm young. I want to plan my life. When I started the business, I tell myself I want to create a, a business kingdom. Uh, create、um, uh, trust funds. Two thousand.、Uh, I had nothing. All that you have planned, everything is gone. You think that everything is perfect, but at the end, it's all vanity. It's all grasping for the wind. Nothing you can really grasp in your hands. Everything that we use, wise wisdom, is all vanity. If we keep everything for children, is it a blessing? Is it good? It's not necessarily. David gave everything to Solomon. Solomon inherited everything from David. He's very, very rich and very wise, but in his、um, <coughs> uh, older days and later days, he fell. His later days,、uh, he left God. Right? He's not、uh, wise. So Solomon had everything in the world. He left everything to his child, his son, and the greatest wealth and empire、uh, has split into two. And Solomon,、uh, what Solomon had, his children cannot inherit. It's all vanity.、Uh, what can they get? It's all vanity. Although you are worried every day and you can't sleep well at night, it's all vanity. And you build, build yourself up.、And、verse twenty-four: Nothing is better for a man than that he should eat and drink, and that his soul should enjoy good and labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God. For who can eat? For who can have enjoyment more than I? For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight, but to the sinner he gives work of gathering and collecting. It's all vanity, grasping for the wind. 
Nothing is better for the man. Nothing is better for the man. The best for the man. Nothing is better than eating and drinking and enjoying from your labor. You can enjoy yourself、uh, from your labor. After labor, there is fruits. After working, you can enjoy、uh, the home that you have created when you have、uh, contributed to the family. This is the、um, blessing from God already.、Um, is this fully fill us? No. Who can? Who has? Talking about pleasure, who can beat me? That's true. Who can be compared to Solomon? Who can be better than me? And he discovered God. Whoever God likes will give wisdom to that person and happiness to that person. Except sinner, everything that he has built will be given to those that God likes. Whatever we labor, everything is in the hands of God. God uses, gives peace to whoever He chooses. The sinners, the wrongdoers, and the accumulated wealth,、uh, ultimately it will be distributed to people that God pleases. You think that you can accumulate wealth? Everything ultimately is in God's hands. So, from a perspective of life, everything is vanity. Nothing is in our in our in our control, but everything is in control of God's hands. So, life's vanity, whether it's vanity, depends on your relationship with God. If we don't have a relationship with God, whatever we do in in life, it's all vanity. Everything we build will become vanity. Even if you build. Is greater than Solomon. Nothing can continue, and no matter what, what, how great you do, nobody will remember. No matter how much you create it,、um, you leave it to your children.、Uh, it's not quite sure what your children will do. You can't control it. You think you have a lot of wisdom, but the children may not want to look at it. You can't really,、um, they can't, they can't really inherit it. Are they wise or are they fools? We don't. It's not out. It's also out of our control. It's all vanity. We don't have connection with God. Everything will become vanity. So in this, on the second day of Chinese New Year, let's、uh, look at、uh, Chinese New Year. Let's think about our lives. What about our labor? Is there God? If there's no God. Everything is nothing in vanity, but if our if our lives we walk with God, then it's different because whatever we do, there is God's participation that is for eternity. Amen. In chapter two, verse eleven. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. There is no profit under the sun. In this、uh, verse, whatever we are looking for okay, under the sun, there is no profit. It's all. Vanity. What we get from wisdom is vanity. What we labor is under the sun. Nothing is perpetual. So what the preacher is telling us, we need to chase not things under the sun. We need to chase after things above the sun, because our God is above the sun. Is king above the sun, so we need to invest in eternity. This is the real wisdom. Let's all pray, and that the Holy Spirit can help us, so that 
the spirit can, Holy Spirit can see things that up above the the sun. We we won't be too worried about things and fear about things under the sun. We need to focus on things above the sun. We need to focus on eternity. We need to focus on something that's even more real, more important things that's above the sun. Open our eyes, spiritual eyes, and we can see things above the sun. Your throne. We want to focus on you, so that our lives will be different. So that whatever we, when we're living, it's not all about labor or grief. We are walking with you. So help us, Lord. Put this wisdom on us. Thank you, Lord. Pray. Listen to our prayer in Jesus' name. We pray. Thank you.